have three children. The father, Ulner, directs his 13-year-old son, the cameraman, to get a close-up of their emotionally battered mother. Zoom in. Do you see a tear? No. Not a tear out of that face. Yep, I got that. He indicates he wants the tape to prove that his anger at his wife is justified. What prompts his tirade? Susan asks him if he'd like some lunch. Come over here with this stupid yeah. and stir it up. No, you didn't leave. You didn't just come ask me about lunch. He even makes his 13-year-old son join him in blaming her. You enjoy getting that because that's obvious. Yes, you do. Because you know it provokes it. You yeah. do it anyway. You do it anyway. How are you going to say something stupid like that? And you can hear on the videotape how his badgering, his criticism wore her down by twisting her words. When I was watching my son do something, and he said, don't look at him like you're interested in what he's doing. And I said, I think I am interested in what my children do. I think I'm interested in my children. And he turned that into, I think I'm interested in what my children do. So you can think you care about your children, whatever you want to think you care about. You don't. And then he turned it into, I think I love my children. All in the same conversation. That phrase turned into something totally different. In that 51-minute tape, Ulner calls Susan stupid 36 times. And just you standing there talking stupid like because she used to be on your knees apologizing to stupid The rant. Yes. The, the mental and verbal abuse. Just hours. I mean, he would call it a family meeting. And these family meetings were all about what mommy did wrong today. He totally had my children completely on his side, completely brainwashed. It was the traumatic climax to a very public ordeal. Four girls dragged screaming from their mother, Laura Garrett, by police. Stop me! The girls running, and then other girls running, girls resisting, screaming. Laura. Laura. My name is Emily Vincenti, and I'm 14 years old. Italian-born Emily. Claire, Christine and Lily Vincenti were illegally brought to Australia by Laura My name is Lily Vincenti and I'm nine years old when her relationship with husband Tommaso broke down. Now they were going back to Italy. <laughs> Except we can now reveal these heart-wrenching scenes were an act orchestrated by Laura her mother, Kate, and grandmother, Carol. I can't just walk away. I have to tell this story. Melissa and Troy Thompson lived through it all, only to eventually come to believe that they, along with the Australian public, had been manipulated. I was really upset that I was, I was part of this, and I was made part of this by you know, deception. It's a sadly familiar theme in this terrible family saga. The girls being told time after time their father was a monster. The reason we don't want to um, go with our dad in, back in Italy is because we are scared of him. They thought that their father um, was a violent man. They thought that their father didn't pay any child support. They thought that their father didn't love them. And they'd had these ideas reinforced over and over again in their minds. So uh, who'd want to be in part of that? Who would want to be part of that? The sad thing is none of that was true. The reluctance the children felt to 
to return to their father. Do you, do you really believe that all came from brainwashing? Yes, I do. Yes. Some of the things that are coming out in these documents aren't... What Finally, Melissa and Troy started to question Laura's many stories and eventually examined the records which she said proved Tommaso's alleged violence, but they didn't. Uh, nothing, nothing that those, that family has told me has come to be truth. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. What the documents did show was that Laura had lied to Tommaso to get him to sign the girl's passport applications in Italy. This is what she told us last year. Did you tell the Australian Embassy that you had told him that you're taking the kids just for a month's holiday? It was stupid just a holiday. I'm, I'm asking, I'm asking your daughter, Kate, I'm asking Laura. When the father signed those passports, he signed the passports for permanent relocation. But that lie is now laid bare in her own documents. This fake receipt for a month's camper van hire Laura gave to Marso to convince him she was just planning a holiday in Australia. You know, when you reflect on how you are so prepared to financially and emotionally help yeah. this family to the extent of even coaching in part the girls, I mean, you look back on that and what do you say about your own involvement? I, I was, um, at the time you're in it, you're thinking, I'm, I'm going to help these people and I'm going to defend them, you know, and, and then when you realize that you were actually helping them, you know, hurt the children, it's, it's a big eye-opener. Sorry. Do you think there will be long-term damage to the girls? Long damage? I hope no. When you look, your daughter suffer, you suffer. And I am ready to suffer for my girls, yes. I hope it's not a long-term damage, but I don't know because <laughs> it's uh, terrible what's uh, happened to my girls, yes. My dad gets out of the car and immediately upon entering she, he's getting yelled at, screamed at, she's this, you're this, you're uh, you know, all kinds of bad language, bad things that you can say to somebody. My dad is not a yeller, my dad has never raised his voice, my dad is very matter-of-factly, very like, hey, I'm sure that this, like, I'm not sure how this got so blown out of proportion, but I'm sorry that it happened, but, you know, let's just not make a big deal about it. I'm here now. I'd like to take Ryan. Oh, no, 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 no. And the calmer that my dad stayed, the more incensed and angry they got. And they got so mad that that just fueled the fire. And so as all this is happening, again, I'm just sitting at the top of the stairs shaking at this altercation. And I'm being given in my ear, it's awful, he's terrible, look at how you know, awful he's being to your mother. Well, one thing you have to know about me is whenever I would travel, I loved wrestling guys, the WWF wrestling guys, the <clears throat> big rubber ones. I had a whole crate of them and a wrestling ring that I always traveled with, and it was always a thing. So by the door downstairs was this wrestling ring and my wrestling guys all ready to go. So in this altercation that's happening, my dad again is trying to stay very calm, and he picks up the wrestling ring and says, well, I'm sorry that it happened, but you know, I'm going to take Ryan now and, and, and we're going to go. My mom takes the wrestling ring and says, absolutely not, and throws the wrestling ring down. It's at that point that we hear this loud smash, crash of this, and my aunt says to me, he just threw your mother down the stairs. So I'm crying, I'm hysterical, and now instead of saying, this something bad just happened. Stay here, which I shouldn't have already even been in this situ in the area. Instead of stay, stay there, she starts grabbing me so that I can go down the stairs. So I, my little legs are going down one stairs. Then I'm taking two stairs at a time. Now I'm taking three stairs at a time, winding down the, the staircase. I'm literally being dragged down the stairs. 
I come around the corner. By this point, there's a little landing to the main area. By this point, my dad is trying to back up and get out of the door. So he's in the threshold with the door open. And my grandpa and my mom are yelling at him and as he's backing up. We come down the stairs. My aunt comes right up to him, pushes him out the door. He goes flying out the door backwards. They're yelling, screaming. The rest of the troop go out there. They're yelling and screaming at him, walking him back to his car because they're telling him, there's no way you're going. You're not going to see him. You're causing all kinds of problems, all these things, awful things. And so that story, that creation of drama, that creation of strife and awfulness, that is what my entire life was like. That anything that related about my dad was made to be difficult, petty, awful, and then he got the blame. So it's like, it's literally like, imagine showing a picture of some, imagine showing a picture to somebody, and every time you show that picture to them, you burn their hand with a flame. And then you go, see what that picture, every time you look at that picture, your hand catches on fire and you burn. This is exactly what it is in parental alienation. You associate awful things that you create or awful scenarios that a parent creates and associate it with that other parent that they want to alienate, that they want to destroy a relationship with. And that's all it takes. And you do it over and over and over again so that's all the child knows. Sandra certainly has never been afraid to call the police, ever. If there were instances of David being violent or threatening, there would be police reports of it. There are none. Sandra's strongest proof was always the testimony of her children. But today, one of those children has recanted his story. Oldest son, Nico. Get up there, Nico. That little boy from the home videos and the same son who later posted that damning Facebook message accusing his father of physical abuse. He now says all of that was a lie and that it was his mother who pressed him into believing it was true. She started to say like, your dad's this bad guy. Your dad like hurt you when you were younger. And I was like, what? What, is, what are you talking about? I, I don't remember any of this. Well, it happened to you. It's like, and at the time I believed it because you listened to your mom. He says he was 15 years old and he couldn't understand why she didn't want him to see his father. I felt really close to my dad and I didn't know, I was still confused on what was going on, like why wasn't I seeing my dad. Nico now says he never saw his father physically abuse his mother or his brother and sisters. As for that Facebook post, Nico says Sandra stood over him while he typed, coaching him on exactly what to say. Ma, can you get the police because, yeah, he's taking my photo because he won't tell me exactly what happened. He has no right to do that. I asked you a simple question. So your mom going to get the police? I don't know. I'm asking you a question. Where did you do this? Earl, they don't Tim, you are really making the kids nervous. Earl, I know my own children ever since. Okay. Ever since what? I know my children. Ever, ever since, since what? you abandoned them. I, abandoned I know them? them, okay? Oh, I thought I left you. No, I'm recording it too, just to make sure that we're even, Stephen, okay? Yeah, I don't so care that's about that. No problem. Oh, 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 don't scratch the car. Oh, no, scratch the car. Go ahead, do whatever you want to do. Come on, let me hold the train. No, that's their train. I got the train until. Okay, hold on. No, you hold on to that train. Don't let him take that away from you. Nope. Don't let him put the, the train on the car, please, Kim. You need to tell me exactly what happened. Oh, see, you got the boys crying. Well, you took his train. Don't, don't scratch the car. I didn't take it. Don't scratch Answer the car. The question. Get daddy a kiss. Get daddy a kiss. Answer the question. Look. Can I pick him up, Kim? Put him down. Can I pick the You're kid up? You're over the time. Let me You're pick the kid. over the time. So I can't pick the kids Let up? Let go. Would you tell me where you did? So I can't pick the kids Can up? Can you tell me what you did? They got a haircut, Kim. Where? Where, Earl? You put a shaver to their head. How dare you do that? You finished? 
Yeah. And your mom was going to get the police, huh? Kim, Kim would you please I, have them get the train off the car? Answer the question. I'm going to take the train from them. Okay, take them and then they'll be bowling and yeah. it's all you. Yeah. That's it. They can't have the train on the car. Well, then now, you need to answer the question. Why don't you back up from then the car then? you need to answer the question. Back up from the car. They're going to remember you as an image of taking this away. Then back I up from the car, Kim. Then answer my question, please. Back up from the car. Answer my question. Kim, you shouldn't be doing this in front of the kids. Would you please tell me? You're doing it, Earl. Who gave you the right to do that? Who gave you the right? Oh, I wish you let me leave, Kim. Who gave you the right? I'm just friend telling you, if they need a haircut, I'll give it to them. If they need a haircut, I'll give it to them. They told you to cut the haircut. Do you want me to send you the bill? No. You do not cut you them. Think it's funny. Yeah, send me the bill. You think Earl, it's funny. Earl, you should have been more conscious about them being sick with the fever instead of trying to give them a haircut. Oh, Kim. he's videotaping that. I know, so am I. I'm doing the same thing, Mom. I just uh, want to I'm going to crack him on his head. Miss Wood, back up. Le Behave back up. yourself. Back up, Ms. Woods. Behave yourself. He's a waste of space. Behave yourself. Get out the car, y'all. Scared. What is your name, honey? Look close. What's your name? Hold on, Ms. Woods. You... Ronnie? What's your mommy's name? What's your name? What's your mommy's name? What's your mommy's name? Let the car go. Y all, y all get, Are you, you touching me? Get, get away from the car. Help. Are you hitting me? Help. Get away from the car. Are me? you hitting me? Get you away from the car. Me. Did you just hurt me? Get Are away from the car. Did you just hurt me? Get away from the car. Did you just me? put your hands on me? Are you hitting me? Get away from the car. Did you put your hands on me? Get away from the car. Did you put your hands on me? Let's go. You put your hands on me? I'm going to have a physical. Go ahead. Let me go ahead. Let's go. I'm going to put a complaint against you. I'm about to walk back to the police station myself. Let's go. Uh-uh. You put your hands on me. Leaving a child in the car. Each time CPS pushed that I would not be allowed to have any visitation with my son in the name of erring on the side of caution. In one particular hearing, the judge even stated that he had heard multiple allegations against me, but yet was never provided any real evidence to support the claims. How old was your son at the time? He was six. And he was in the U.S.? by CPS three times. I frequently reported to CPS that my ex-wife was brainwashing him, that she was engaged in parental alienation or uh, pathogenic parenting. For 12 months, CPS refused to believe me. She had a bachelor's degree and experience as a police officer. She had a master's degree in clinical psychology. She had a PhD in criminology and taught courses at the University of Texas at Dallas in victimology. Yet none of that made any difference to CPS and their investigation. For 12 months, CPS believed me to be a danger to my son. They only changed their mind when after a week-long jury trial, um, the, uh, the sole custody of my son was awarded to me and she was stripped of her parental rights. And after that, she was allowed to go home and she shot my son and then shot herself. 